I'm running the Boston Marathon this year for The Sky's the Limit, which is our courtyard project that we've been working on. And um, I actually, we got bibs last year to, to do it, and I had it in my head that maybe I could train and get ready for it last year. And I got pneumonia, and so I didn't even mention it. And then this year, I, you know, Miss Mercier, who is one of our teachers, ran for it la us last year, and I was thinking, oh, God, I would love to, to get a bib and run officially. Um, it was more than, I thought it was more than 20 years ago, but I think it's more than 25 years ago, closer to that, that I ran two Bostons in a row, but I ran as a bandit runner. Um, and I always wanted to run officially. And this year is, uh, what I did this summer was, I had an opportunity to do a Couch to 5K program through the Milford Community Youth Program, which is my hometown now. And I did it with my daughter, and um, we did the 5K in September, and I just kept running. And I kept it in my mind. Uh, th the only race that ever mattered to me was the Boston Marathon, like the 5Ks. And I, I have done a lot of different races, you know, earlier um, when I was younger. and. I never was running for anything except to do Boston because I have such a passion for it. Um, as a family, we used to go every year to watch the Boston Marathon. It was a big deal. Um, I remember one year going in my uncle's uh, convertible and the kids, we, we were sitting all on the back of the convertible at the Denison and watching all the runners go by and, you know, I'd look for Johnny Kelly every year who I'd be so excited to see because he was like a celebrity to me. and. Um, so I, you know, I thought to myself, it would be great this year if I could do it. So I did the summer program, and I just kept running. And finally, in January, when I knew that my mileage was getting up, and I knew that I had the legs and the, you know, the air to do it, um, I asked if I could run f under our bib number that we received from the town and the uh, committee that I work with. All of the women that I work with were overwhelmingly um, pleased and excited about that. So. I have the official number and I'm running on April 20th for The Sky's the Limit and it's a, a passion of mine. And I thought what a great thing to do because I get to, to take the passion. My passion is not for running truthfully. My passion is for the idea of the marathon and, and what you have to give in the training that you do. And um, I admire the people who, who have run it, you know, and come before me and, you know, I, you know Jean, uh, Joan. Benoit Samuelson, I like followed her career and um, it uh, um, Pipping, the woman who ran and won three times, the only woman who did that. I um, got, I, I've never been on Facebook or Twitter and I just did a Facebook and Twitter account to try to get, you know, people interested in supporting me. And she posted, somehow somebody connected me with her. I think it must have been Miss Pinto, but she, um, wrote back to me and I, I got so excited. She, I wrote, read an article and I just wrote a comment on the article. She wrote back to me three times and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Because um, I, I remember her story so vividly. So it was like, and, and of course I wrote to my kids and um, my friends and said, guess who wrote to me? You know, this is so, so cool. And uh, they were very excited about it too. So I feel like I get to combine the passion that I have of making this space available for our kids. And I've wanted this as a teacher here first for 14 years. I would ask the kids, you know, what is it that you want in our school? What can we do to improve? And what they always wanted was a space for them just to hang out, um, to, to, you know, gather, to be with your friends. And, you know, like, I feel like as kids we had that. You could go to somebody's front porch or backyard or whatever. And things are so different today. Um, you know, they, where they go is Bill's Pizza or downtown, and um, not that there's, you know, I mean, that's fine, but it's not their place. So I thought, would it, wouldn't it be great to have this beautiful space that we have here that's not used? The only entrance was a boys' room that you could go through, so you can't get there. Um, if we could have that open to the kids and have it as a place that they can go um, and, you know, just call their own and then to, create this space that could be an extended learning environment, but also a place after school to sit and read or hang out with your friends and be supervised and enclosed and out in the fresh air, which is so awesome to me.